Hi guys, this is a video on the fifth model of the Atom. Okay, the last one, it's the Electron Cloud model, also known as the Quantum Mechanical Model. Okay, it's a mathematical representation. Okay, it's a little challenging, um, but we're going to keep it very, very basic. Now, this model determines the allowed energies an electron can have. Okay, it represents how likely it is to find the electron in various locations around the nucleus. Okay, so the electron cloud here is very similar to an airplane propeller. So, if you see an airplane propeller spinning around, the cloud is a representation of that where you know the electron is going to be located in this cloud, just like the airplane propeller. You can't see the propeller when it's moving, but you see a general like black cloud circle cloud and that's where the propeller is located it's moving around just like the electron is okay so it's going to be a cloud um <clears throat> it's based off of the schrodinger equation okay it's a mathematical uh equation that you're going to use in physical chemistry or in physics as well and it's essentially an equation used to uh use for finding the probability of locating an electron and the cloud is more dense where the probability of finding an electron is high okay this will definitely be looked at down the road okay we're not going to really get into it too deep now the quantum mechanical model is the modern description of the electrons and atoms they came from the mathematical solutions to the Schrodinger equation in 1926 by Erwin Schrodinger. Okay, it's an equation, like I said, used a lot in physical chemistry. Okay, for each energy level, okay, within an atom, the Schrodinger also leads to a mathematical expression called an atomic orbital. Okay, so an atomic orbital is a very, very important part of the atom. Okay, an atomic orbital is a region of space which there is a high probability of finding an electron. Okay, so it's basically where an electron is located. Okay, so we're going to say, um, we're going to, on paper, write down these lines. Some schools use boxes. Okay, we're just going to use lines because they're easier to write. Now, on this line right here, it can actually sit, hold on, um, two electrons. Okay. One electron goes up, it's a half arrow, and one electron goes down, half arrow. So two electrons located on this one line, that's an atomic orbital. All right. Now, remember, orbitals are solutions of Schrodinger's equations, okay, for locating where electrons are. Now, let's take a look. There's some energy levels. Principal quantum energy uh, number is n, okay, little n. Now, uh, they are the energy levels of electrons in the quantum mechanical model. N equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, these are your periods on the periodic table. At the top, hydrogen going left to right is N equals 1. Uh, N equals 2 is the second period going left to right. Then you have your third energy level going left to right as well. So if you look at the periodic table from top to bottom, you're going to have seven periods, starting with hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. Those are your seven energy levels. And those are the elements for the start of the first uh, period of each one. Uh, they also can be known as shells later on. Some people use shells as a term. Okay. Now, within each energy level, there are something called sublevels. So sublevels are, are basically parts... Of, within each level okay hence the term sub levels okay now there are sub levels s p d and f what do they stand for well uh, they stand for <clears throat> a few things sharp for s principle for p diffuse for d and fundamental for f something you don't need to know but i figure i'd let you guys see what they all are they're just names given to them okay now there is an increase of energy of sublevels from S, which is low energy, through P, D, and F, which are the higher energies. Notice 
I wrote low energy red, high energy in purple. We're going to discuss that later. Now, type of sublevel, okay? Let's look at S. In an S sublevel, there's only going to be one orbital or one line. In a P sublevel, there's going to be three lines. In a D sublevel, there's going to be five lines. And in the F sublevel, there's going to be seven lines. Okay? Those lines are basically what we talked about are orbitals. And each line or orbital holds two electrons. So let's look at this. This is an S orbital. S orbitals are a spherical shape. Okay, P's are dumbbell shaped. Okay, right here you have a dumbbell. Okay, and there's three of them. One on the X, one on the Y, and one on the Z. So there's an X, Y, Z. PX, PY, PZ. Three different shapes. Okay, or sorry, orientations. Okay, they have a dumbbell shape, but the S has a sphere shape. Now the D, you do not need to know these shapes. They have a few down here, very interesting looking. And then F also has seven different shapes, which you don't need to know these either. So you only need to know your S and your P. So your dumbbell for the P and your sphere for the S. Now let's look at this question here. It's very important. Calculation of the maximum number of electrons per sub-level S, P, D, and F. Remember, S, P, D, and F are sublevels within an energy level. We're going to talk about this later. It's kind of a lot to be thrown at you. Okay. Now, we're going to set up this little table for you guys to see. Now, it's very simple how to calculate it. So we have a couple columns, type of sublevel, number of orbitals, number of lines. Okay, these are your orbitals. Max number of electrons. This is what we're looking for. So let's take a look and see how we calculate the max number of electrons per sublevel. So I typed it out here for you. you. So let's look at the four of interest. S, P, D, and F. Okay. S has one orbital, one line. P has three orbitals, three lines. D has five orbitals, one, two, three, four, five. And F has seven orbitals. Okay. So these are your four amounts of orbitals. They're all different. Okay. So each line holds two electrons. Each orbital holds two electrons. So in an S, there can only be two electrons. Now in a P, P can hold six electrons. Okay. There's three sublevel. I'm sorry, three orbitals within the P sublevel. So there's a total of six electrons here. Okay, pretty easy. D has five. You're going to get a total of ten. Okay, it just takes a while to write these out. All right. Okay, so there's ten electrons in the D sublevel. Okay, and the F, there's seven orbitals or seven lines. Each line holds two, so seven times two is 14. Okay, so it's very important right there. Now let's let's look at another important aspect of this that you're going to be asked later on, especially when you're looking at the periodic table. Okay, we're going to build off this, don't forget. Okay, there's another very important question. It's called calculation of the maximum number of electrons per energy level. Whoa, what does this mean? Well, this is your period on the periodic table going left to right. How many electrons are there present? Okay, well, we need to know our blocks on the periodic table. Okay, this nice little um, slide that I found. So let's look at the S, P, D, and F areas of the periodic table. Okay, now <clears throat> you have group 1A and 2A. These guys right here. This is your S block. Then you have over here, you have your P block. And then here in the middle, your transition metals, this is your D block. Then all the way at the bottom, you have your F block. Now, um, if you could see right here, you have 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S, 7S. Those are your periods. These tell you the rows of the periodic table, and they go left to right across the periodic table. <coughs> okay. 
Now, as you move left to right across the periodic table, you're going to transition from one group to the next. You're going to go from one block to the next. So each principal energy level has different sublevels. The and also, the entire D block has a vertical shift down by one row. That is a very important statement right here. Okay, this is uh, a reason why the transition metals are the way they are. Because the D block has a vertical shift down. Why is it like that? Well, it's because of their electrons. Okay, and there's a formula we need to know. 2N squared. Okay, this is actually a very simple formula. You, if you know the period... You plug the period in, which is your n, you uh, <clears throat> square it, then you multiply it, okay? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, let's look here, the number of sublevels uh, for each one. Now, in the first energy level, there's only an S sublevel. In the second energy level, there's an S and a P. In the third energy level, there's an S, P, and a D. In the fourth energy level, there's an S, P, D, and F, okay? So let me take a second and go back to that slide with the blocks, okay? In the first energy level, as you go left to right, there's only an S. In the second energy level, as you go left to right, there's only an S and a P. In the third energy level, there's a 3S and a 3P. And remember, the D block is shifted down. So you have your 3S, 3P, 3D. In the fourth energy level, there's a 4S, 4P, 4D, and 4F. Okay, take a second, look at this, go left to right. Notice the D block is shifted down one. Okay, so going back to this here, you have your S, S and P, S, P, D, S, P, D, F. Now, your S has two electrons. It only has one orbital, so your sublevel will only have two electrons. Your second energy level has an S and a P. So it has one orbital and three orbitals, so two electrons plus six electrons is eight. Your S has one orbital, your P has three orbitals, your D has five. So your sum is two electrons for the S, six electrons for the P, ten electrons for the D, which is a sum of 18 electrons, which is the maximum number of electrons for that energy level. Okay, fourth energy level, your SPDF, your S has two <clears throat> electrons in its one orbital, P has six in its three orbitals, 10 has, sorry, D has 10 in its five orbitals, F has 14 in its seven. So two plus six plus 10 is four, plus 14 is 32. So now that formula, two N squared, if you just take the N just for one, two, three, and four, okay, one squared is one times two is two. Two squared is four times two is eight. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. Okay, it seems like a lot. It's chemistry. This is a part of why we have these orbitals. It's because of the mathematical representation of where the electrons sit. Now, we're going to build off this. This is not easy. I get it, but it's something you need to be familiar with. The S, the P, the D, and F, and that table, okay, which is right here. You have your S block, P block, D block, F block. It's like different towns within a county. As you go through one town, you enter another town into another town. Very similar, okay? The periodic table has these arrangements. You need to be familiar with it, okay? And that's the end of this section. So we are going to build off of this, and we're going to move into electron configurations later on, okay? And it is a lot easier. This here, you need to probably go back or rewatch it, look in your book, look at that table with the S block, P block, D block. You need to be familiar with the arrangements. And your S has one orbital, P has three orbitals, <clears throat> D has five, and your F has seven. Each orbital holds two electrons. You need to know that. All right, guys, that's the end of this.